So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the GP2X series. And it's going to be a nostalgia trip and I hope for you a lot of fun. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we're going to take a close look at the GP2X series from Korea. Yes, I recently like picked up the, all of these handhelds and I just want to do an I'm gonna say side by side comparison, but just a quick overview of all the handhelds. I did full reviews about them, but just a fun, like nostalgia trip with all of these great devices. So we started off in this Avenger of the GP2X with the Black Edition. I don't know if they sell it in different colors, but the point is, this thing is pretty damn cool. I think it was a very nice piece of equipment, especially for back then. Later on, we took a look at the new model, the GP2X F200. It's absolutely a big improvement, even comes with some touch capabilities. Pretty damn cool. And there was one last one I've really seen. That I cannot talk anymore. But the last one we have reviewed is the Wiz, also for the GP2X series. But the thing is, it's a quite interesting piece of tech because this thing was the next level. So basically, these were the two models I've reviewed here on the channel. So this model, the GP2X, the one with the weird analog stick, is a quite interesting concept. It also had like a click beneath, so we can select something in the menu. It was a very nice, convenient way to navigate because we didn't have the touch. So with the newer model, we did have the GP2X. This new model did have the touch and it has like some minor, let's say upgrade if you ask me. Then we do still use original batteries and I find it not really convenient because you had still like the same connector at the bottom that you can like communicate or charge your system. In the end, like I find it a little bit of a bummer when I review them that it was like a minor upgrade in some ways. But let's take a close look at the device first. But if you're looking at the build quality, it's absolutely just ahead of its time. And that is something that I find really fascinating with these older handhelds. And I completely understand that people want to have them in their collection. So this first model they released with a kind of a weird analog stick. You can see it's not a slider. You would say when you're looking at it, you were thinking, hey, it's maybe a slider like the Place Portable. Absolutely not. This is just your wiggly like analog stick that you're going to get. Kind of weird, there's no D-pad whatsoever. Also at the front, we're going to get volume control, select start, A, B, X, Y. The configuration of the buttons is also very strange because the AB is over here and the XY is over there. But that's one of the things that we need to live with. Then we do have like select the start and two front facing speakers for quite good audio quality. Alright, so when you're looking at this handheld, it's a quite interesting one. To begin with, we do have like two shoulder buttons. Something that is of course common nowadays. We even got more with the new generation of handhelds. We have a jack phone out that will be protected with a rubber and we do have the option to expand the internal memory with an SD card. But it's quite interesting is like with the new generation of handhelds we're also going to get a lithium battery inside but this bloody thing still works on two AA batteries. Quite interesting if you ask me and then we do have like this special connection port here at the bottom that also is going to be protected by a rubber. It's quite interesting the way like what you can do with it and especially like how it looks and what kind of functionality you have. And here at the left side we do have the slider on and off. And here we do have like the option to transfer data and then we do have this very tiny barrel jack. Hope you can show it over here. That basically gives you the option to connect it with an external power source. But powering on the device itself is going to be quite challenging. So this thing does have the option for two, let's say two batteries, but it's just a freaking nightmare. I add a couple of them. I do have a couple of brands and they are quite powerful. They normally give like enough amps to basically power on the device. But the problem I'm having is like when booting it up and here it comes, where it doesn't come. Yeah, that's what I mean. So the screen is all messed up. I tried, the weird thing is like I tried the same batteries in my different devices and I don't have any issues whatsoever. So far I understand like they released back in the day, let's say from China, a lot of handhelds, but not like this. This was more like your multimedia center. You can bring this thing with you, watch some videos, watch pretty naughty pictures and even play some games on it. It even came with a sub menu and with extra sub menu, you do have the option to sideload some games. Think about some homebrew games you can pick up from, let's say, the community. A lot of cool things you could do with this. But I think the most interesting part was the emulation. But sadly, with some reconfiguration, it's going to be quite challenging to get everything running, in my opinion, on this device. But it was quite interesting to see what was possible with the GP2X. That we do have the option to play some retro emulation. 
because I think back in the day there was not a lot of options out there and that was pretty damn cool for this handheld. If you mess around with emulators and some configurations, I think when you're getting into the 8-bit and 16-bit stuff, we could play a lot of games. But I did notice if you want to run PlayStation 1, that is absolutely, in my opinion, out of the question. I did deep dive into this, but not too deep, because I just wanted to see what we're going to get when it comes out of the box. And I can say the experience was pretty damn pleasant, but especially if you think about these things were released around 2005. So now we have seen the quick recap of the black model, the first model. Let's take a close look at the one with the touch. So when you're looking at this GP2X, this new model, it looks very similar to the previous one. We're going to take a close look at that later. So first, let's take a close look at the handle itself. What are we going to get? So we're going to get ourselves like the four directional keys. Then we're going to get ABXY, select start volume at the front to Stickers, stickers, and we're going to get a volume at the front. Very nice because that's something I'm missing out. Good volume. Then we're going to get that external port. I already have this cable in my possession thanks to another fellow collector. So basically, you can charge it, data transfer stuff like that. Here at the left side, we're going to get the on and off switch, shoulder buttons, and I'm gonna say these things are very comfortable. We have a battery compartment, so that is quite interesting. We don't have a built in lithium battery or something like that. Nope, not at all. We also have got an DC port in here, that's the tiny barrel jack and a separate mini USB for data transfer. Because this thing has some built in memory, but I also can extend it with the SD card you can put in here. And of course we do have an audio jack. So when it comes to functionalities, it was quite, let's say, extended when it comes to these, let's say, older devices. Nowadays we're spoiled, nowadays we do have like HDMI functionality. But let's power it on and let's see what we're going to get. Here we do see like, and power LED. All right, so let's see what we're going to get. Open 2X. I'm guessing there are different kind of operating systems. Wouldn't be surprised that it was basically what you're going to get with these devices. You can mod and you can mess around with it. All right, so let's take a close look at the menu. When you're looking at the GP2X, the F200, it was a quite interesting piece of tech and they added some new features, but mostly I think when you're looking at the menu, it was absolutely the same out of the box. I did look around and maybe there are some even some firmware updates for this. They can even get better support and different menu layouts. I like with the previous model, this device also have just the support for the basic stuff, including the same menu like the previous model. And this was just out of the box what we were going to get over here. And when it comes to the emulation performance compared to the F100, I didn't notice a lot of difference over there. The 8-bit, 16-bit games runs just fine, and of course PlayStation 1 runs like crap, like always. So both of these devices are pretty damn cool and nice collectibles, but this device, the Wiz, is absolutely a completely different level. This thing was quite tiny compared with all the other ones, and it even came with a beautiful display. So this thing was absolutely the next level. It also had some better controls. The D-pad was still very bad because I didn't like it for fighting games. But beside that, it wasn't very nice. It comes with a built-in battery. So this thing was absolutely next level shizzle. It's absolutely safe to say that this new Wiz model was just the next generation of those handhelds. And they came with so many improvements. But the question remains, what can we play with it? And was it absolutely worth picking up then? And was it worth picking up now? Because again, I already mentioned, like, I picked it up for not a lot of money. But sometimes you can go for crazy prices. Because these, these things are going to be just, like, collectible items. So the first thing that we're going to get are just shoulder buttons, like with the previous models. We're going to get ABXY. We're going to get a normal D-pad and this thing feels so much better. This thing is very small compared with the other one or both of them, but it's still very comfortable. Menu button, select. So funny thing is like we don't have a volume because the volume over here has been removed and we have select and start over here. We only have one button over here. It's quite an interesting choice, but the volume, yep, the volume is at the bottom and I think that's even better. It looks like, it look, just looks better. You know what, we still do have like two facing stereo speakers. We do have the same connector over here. Then we're going to get a headphone jack out. So here at the top, I already mentioned the shoulder buttons and of course the SD card. So with the SD card, we can just like add some new stuff to it. And of course the on and off switch is similar to the Nintendo Switch. We do have like locking mechanism. And then at the back, we can find ourselves the battery, the lithium battery. But let's remove the cover, kind of weird choice. So we do have this click mechanism to basically like open it up, but there are still two secure screws. Kind of weird if you ask me. So let's see, so this thing comes, I think, with a special battery specially made for this thing. 
So just have like the branding on it. Let's see if we can just remove it like this. But this thing doesn't get out very easy. I'm always trying to record and do the same thing, but I've noticed where some pins over here are holding it in place. So the downside with this is it's going to get broken. You're going to have an issue because this is not your typical battery. So that's a big downside. This thing looks quite nice. Looks very, very good. Here you can see like the stylus is in here. So that's pretty damn awesome. With the other one, I just got like this metal stylus. I don't know if it was the original one, but this thing is basically inside this machine itself. So do we have like some information about the product itself? I cannot read everything, but so far, so here you can see like the GP2X with edition. It's made, I'm guessing, around 2009. So four years later, they released this Wiz model, and it was absolutely a big improvement in any way. We had some basically touch capabilities like the previous model, the F200. Beside the point that I didn't calibrate it before making this video, it works very well. Then we do have even some other cool games. Of course, not everything has been, like say, configured for the touch, so you still need to use the physical buttons, but I think it's not a problem. But when you deep dive in it, you still have the same features when it comes to watching a movie, watching a pretty picture, and of course, if you just want to say, if you just want to play some games, like emulation, because I think that makes this thing very interesting. This thing is absolutely a retro beast and when you compare it for back in the days. Now we're spoiled with so many cool devices like Pau Kitty and Embernic and those things can play so much more. But again, for 2009, I think this device was quite nice and was capable of running a lot of cool things. But the conclusion is that, is this worth picking up? I think if you can pick it up for not a lot of money, I think it's a really cool piece of technology, especially the Wiz. This thing is absolutely cool. And I want to say it holds up to the basic standards that we're having because we have an invasion of these freaking handhelds. And this device is a nice high quality one, but when it comes to the power and you need to tinker a lot with it to get it to work and properly with every single emulator. But when you're looking at it, I think it's a quite interesting piece of history when it comes to Asia handhelds. But in the end, let me know in the comments, did you ever own the Wiz or one of those systems? And what do you think of it? Yeah, I think picking it up for a couple of those is going to be a fun adventure. And you can have a lot of fun with it, especially when you're going to do a lot of tinkering and getting some retro games on it. And there are even some fun flash games. But if you need to pay the full price and you're not really collecting these devices, it's absolutely pointless to buy. But thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit that little bell. Become a Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.